Every prepper should be doing this if they're not already. Stick around, guys. Here in the man cave, I've got one here in my haversack. I also have one in my rustic bushcraft bag, as well as my Kelty 44 Red Wing backpacking bag. I even have one hanging over here by my work table, which you can see is kind of messy and needs to be cleaned up. I keep a small one here in this pocket of my PFD. Inside of my truck, truck Norris, I keep one in my glove box. It's a small one. I keep one in my everyday bag. Behind my seat, there's my get home bag. I keep one in there. And then, of course, I've got this one. So, if you haven't figured it out yet, what I'm talking about, guys, is first aid. So, stick around and let's talk about it, all right? Obstacle? No, honey, you'll spoil your- Hey, parents, tired of those out-of-control kids throwing embarrassing tantrums wherever they go? At the grocery store, on the playground, even at the dinner table. You've had it with parenting, but wait, there is a solution. Introducing nap time, the latest, most effective tool for child tantrum prevention. It's simple. Just douse a rag with our patented sleepy time formula, place it over your child's cry hole, press and hold gently for eight to 12 seconds, and presto, no more tantrum. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm glad you're sticking around. I know there are a lot of places you could be and a lot of things that you could do right now, but you chose to watch my video and I really appreciate it. Hey, I want to take this second. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. It would help out a lot. All right, back to first aid. As you can see, I feel that it is imperative that you have first aid available on you whenever you go anywhere and wherever you are. That's why I have a kit in every bag that I own. But it doesn't stop at just the bags, guys. What about at home? Now, yes, I could, if I'm at home and I have an emergency situation, I could go to those bags and get the first aid. But I still haven't hit on the real topic of this video. At home, you should have a supply of first aid as well. For example, this is our first aid station. I've got some peroxide, some alcohol, I've got some uh, ibuterol, I've got some Robitussin, some pain reliever, some Afri nose spray, some pain gel, some Visine, cotton tip applicators, uh, sponges, all kind of gauze, boxes and boxes of gloves, boxes of band-aids, some new skin, some uh, sodium chloride, uh, some more saline packets, uh, little uh, syringes, pads, these little packets right here. It's a tracheostomy care kit, some back things, some aller allergy relief, some mucinex, antacid, neosporin. We have extra no rinse foam cleansers, mouthwash, and antiperspirant. Down here in this box, I've got my pandemic prep kit, which we will have masks, lots of extra N95 masks, a whole bunch of those, a towel, some rubber gloves, goggles to wear with the masks. We've got some bleach in there, some hand sanitizer, some some all-purpose cleaner, some uh, trash bags for, you know, poop or whatever. Got another pair of those household rubber gloves and another box of gloves. So that's kind of our pandemic kit. And over here we have a six-gallon bucket of water for flushing if the power were to be out. Oh, I even have one 
here in my golf bag. So every time I go golfing, I am, I'm covered. So, there are really two things that I want to get across in this video. Number one is that you, as a prepper, should always have first aid available wherever and whenever you are. Easily accessible. Hopefully, I'll never need it, but it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. You've all heard that before. And the second thing that I want to get across is that it's very important that you tailor your first aid kits to your specific needs. And that it's very important that you have an extensive enough kit to cover whatever type of situation may be available. I think, unfortunately, there are a lot of people that go out to the store and they buy these little first aid kits and they stick it in the bag and forget about it. They just hope that when they do need it, what they need will be in that kit. While that's better than nothing, I think that it's important that you build your own first aid kits. Now, yes, you can go buy an over-the-counter kit at Walmart or heck, even the dollar store. But when you get home, you need to evaluate that kit. Open it up. Look and see what's inside of it. Unfortunately, a lot of these over-the-counter kits are very bare. And they have a lot of stuff that you'll never really need. And I think that what you need to do is, in addition to buying those little kits, I look at those little kits as containers and starter kits. What you need to do is you also need to go to a pharmacy or Walmart or heck even again the Dollar General and buy extra things to go in there. More gauze, better band-aids, more tape. Make sure you have something for stop bleed. Walmart sells this stuff called bleed stop. You can get it at any pharmacy as well. You need to have some of that in every kit that you have. Doesn't take up a lot of room gauze, bandage, wrapping, tape. Just make sure that you can cover whatever type of situation might come up. And uh, as far as medications go, you of course want to make sure you've got some general, you know, anti-diarrhea, you know, like Imodium, um, pain relievers, um, insect relief, burn cream, you know, some, uh, cortisone, uh, that type of stuff. But what I'm talking about is, as far as medications, you also want to make sure that you're covering your specific personal needs as far as medication. In other words, there are certain medications that I have to have because of my cancer and this trach and so forth and so on. There are certain supplies that I have to carry for this trach so, in my case, my bags are tailored towards that. Now, my wife doesn't have really any medical issues, so that's when we would fall back with her on the ibuprofen, the uh, Advil, Imodium, that sort of thing. But for me, it's a little more complicated. And for you, it may be well as well, too. Or if you have someone in your family... You want to make sure that you tailor your, your first aid kit to your specific needs. Uh, that's why most of the items that you saw in my uh, indoor first aid cabinet there in our bathroom, uh, that's not just tailored to my trach and, and stuff, but I'm going to show you this little tracheostomy kit that I have, and I get these on a monthly basis. They send them to me. It can be used for more than just the trach. So let's take a look at that. All right, so inside of this little tracheostomy care kit, you'll find a, a, a number of different things that can be used for other than tracheostomy needs. You'll find some gauze, okay? So every time I open up one of these, I don't use these drain sponges, but they can be used as gauze. I put them in a separate bag. There's a little tie that comes with it. I don't use these type of, of ties for my trach, 
I use a Velcro type. So again, I'm keeping these separate every time I open one of these kits. These could be used for any number of first aid means. It could be used to help to tie off some bandage. They all come with one of these little pads. And inside, or no, these are the gloves, I'm sorry. They all come with a pair of gloves. And again, I don't use the gloves when I change my trach. So I'm putting all of those gloves in different bags. Then they come with one of these pads. And this can be good uh, for a number of different things, as you know. Every kit comes with a pair of these tweezers. I kind of stopped collecting those because I have so many of them now. Uh, they come with some little pipe cleaners. I don't, I use these actually for my pipes. And then they come with three cotton swabs. So I collect these on the side as well. As well as a little wire brush that can be used for a number of different things. So, basically, they send me enough of these little kits to where I can go through one a day. So, I'm accumulating quite a bit of extra first aid kit just through that because this is tailored specifically for me. Alright, so as you can see, inside that little teeny trach kit, it could be used for other purposes as well. I just want to make two points. One, have first aid available, accessible, wherever and whenever you are there, and two, tailor your first aid kits to you and or your family's needs. So, hey, I appreciate you coming along on Urban Outdoors. Till next time, keep calm, carry on, keep puffing, and keep it outdoors.